Savanna from MCAT Mastery. My MCAT journey was not easy, but through perseverance and using some tips from the pros, I ended up getting a 517 on the exam. One of the tools that I swore by during my prep were mnemonics. So that is the topic of today's video. The importance of mnemonics and how to use them. Now I know you've heard of mnemonics, we've all heard Roy G. Biv, and you might think you know all there is to know about them, but let's talk some specifics. So what are mnemonics? Well, according to dictionary.com, a mnemonic is a device such as a pattern of letters, ideas, or associations to assist in remembering something. Sounds easy and vague. Now, according to Mr. Dennis Congos, an academic advisor at the University of Central Florida, there are nine types of mnemonics helpful for memory. Music, name, expression slash word, model, ode slash rhyme, note organization, image, connection, and spelling. Now today we are going to focus on three of those, music, name, and expression slash word, as these are the three types that are easiest to create and apply efficiently. I'm not saying the others might not be useful for you, but here at MCAT Mastery, we are all about tips and tricks that you can apply tomorrow. Now let's talk a little more specific about those three and define them. Music is making a song or jingle that you might recognize to help you remember the content. Name is taking the letters of each list, each thing in the list you want to remember and making a name, such as Roy G. Biff. An expression slash word is again taking the first letter of each thing in your list and creating a silly phrase or word, such as, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally to remember the operations of simple mathematics, parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. So why are mnemonics helpful for the MCAT? Well, memory, duh, we have to pack our brains full of so much content to be ready for this test that if we can condense it and remember a word or phrase instead of a long list, it can be super helpful. Also, words and phrases and letters here and there are really easy to scribble on your whiteboard in those precious minutes before the test begins while everybody else is doing the tutorial. It takes up less brain space and it'll get you to remember the content quickly and efficiently. You might have looked on MCAT Mastery. We have a mnemonics resource as well as resources such as Reddit and Khan Academy that will give you mnemonics that have already been created, such as rest and digest, versus flight or fight to remember our parasympathetic response. One of my favorites is cut the pie. C-U-T, the P-Y. Cytosine, uracil, and thiamine are pyrimidines, one ring structures. I always get tripped up on that and cut the pie was something that I wrote on my sheet before the exam. Using mnemonics that you've found on these various websites that have already been created can be super helpful and save some time but it can still be difficult to remember yet another phrase or word or whatnot. So in my opinion, being able to create these mnemonics yourself might take a little longer, but in the end, you'll remember them so much better. So now let's create some together. We'll start with music. Step one is to pick a popular song, tune, or nursery rhyme, such as the ABCs, Hot Cross Bones, Seven Rings, any other pop song that you really like. And music mnemonics work best with long lists, such as remembering elements. Now what I will choose is hot cross buns. Hot cross buns, hot cross buns, one a penny, two a penny, hot cross buns. Now if I wanna use this tune to remember that an SN2 reaction is one bond forming, one bond breaking simultaneously, and it's a second order rate, I could say SN2, S, N, 2, one bond formed, one bond break, second order rate. Now, when I hear the tune, bum, 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 instead of thinking of hot cross buns, I think of S and 2 reactions. The next type of mnemonic that we can create are name mnemonics. Like I said previously, that is when we pick out the first letters of each word in the list and create a name or a word. This works best for shorter lists as the word will seem more like an actual word and not just a list of letters. For example, if I want to remember that fluorine, oxygen, and nitrogen are the three electronegative atoms that are super important in hydrogen bonding, I would take those letters, F, O, and N, and create a word, fawn, or fun. Now, with just an F-O-N, I remember fawn for hydrogen bonding. Maybe I'm fond 
of hydrogen bonding. Or fawns love hydrogen bonding. However you choose to remember it. But we have a name and now we have a three letter phrase to help us remember those elements. Now the third type of mnemonic I will walk you through today is an expression mnemonic. Again, we are picking out the first letters of each word in our list and we're creating a phrase. A really great tip is to use popular or family names that you'll remember and to make it as silly and ridiculous as possible. I promise you will remember it better if it makes you chuckle. So for example, if I want to remember the cell cycle, Growth phase one, DNA synthesis, growth phase two, mitosis, cytokinesis. I will take the first letter of each of those words. G, D, G, M, C, and come up with a funny phrase, such as, go Sally, go, make cookies. Now that's not super silly or fun, but I like the repetition and it makes sense for me. Maybe it makes sense for you. Creating mnemonics in this way can happen at any point in your process whether you prefer name, expression, or music. If you come across a difficult concept or a list that you're struggling to remember in your practice, take a step back, take a few minutes, and create a unique mnemonic that you will remember, and then practice it. Speaking of practice, how do we do that? The nice thing about mnemonics is that they are concrete and easy to practice. First, if it is a name or expression, write it down. Write it down over and over. Sit in front of the TV and write it on a sticky note. Paste it on your desk. Make sure you're getting that repetition. Flashcards can also be super useful for mnemonics because they are easily written and explained. Integrate these flashcards in your regular MCAT practice. And if it is a music mnemonic, sing it to yourself around the house. Be silly, be ridiculous. Get into the shower and sing hot cross buns to remember s and reactions. As long as you are constantly exposing yourself to that mnemonic, you will make sure to remember it. And lastly, integrate them into the list of equations and tricks that you can write down during the tutorial time at the beginning of the exam. Every time you sit down to do a practice test or a long session, take a minute and write that list down. Write it out so that once you get to your test date, it becomes muscle memory. If mnemonics are part of this, you'll do a great job. Now this might be hard at first. Creating mnemonics takes creativity and time, and it can be super frustrating to spend time on strategy when you feel like you need to spend time on content. The MCAT is super frustrating in general, but if you continue to improve your strategy and use tips like this one that are easy but high yield, you'll see your scores improve in no time. And if you want more free, effective strategies from a lot of top scorers, plus access to the VIP area and the mnemonics that I mentioned earlier, please check out the links below. We got this.